The espionage narrative just grew a little more complicated. According to multiple reports, Israeli spies tipped off the NSA that Russia was spying on them using antivirus software made by the Russian company Kaspersky Lab. How did Israeli intelligence officers know this? Because they had hacked into Kaspersky's network. Last month, the Department of Homeland Security ordered federal agencies to remove Kaspersky software from government computers. Kaspersky has denied these allegations. Frank Salufo, director of the Center for Cyber and Homeland Security at George Washington University, is in Washington. He also served as a senior homeland security official to former President George W. Bush. All right, so Frank, first of all, can you explain the significance of these complicated revelations? Sure, um, and obviously not all the information is public right now, but I can promise you that DHS wouldn't have taken the position they did outright banning a, uh, a company's products from being used uh, within the federal government unless there were there was a smoking uh, gun and in this case maybe more aptly a smoking keyboard uh, mm. given the uh, revelations that the Israelis provided. But think of it this way. It's a question of who's guarding the guards. In essence, your, your uh, uh, antivirus software and some of the software that is actually there to provide security can also be used uh, uh, in, in, in malicious kinds of ways. And I think what you're seeing here, there have been lots of rumors about Kaspersky for quite some time, but I think the, uh, the, the smoking keyboard came out loud and clear uh, uh, very recently with the Israeli revelations, allegedly. Well, so what are the next steps then, Frank, and what does the U.S. need to do to address this? You know, we've seen this script play out somewhat differently in the past, but that was with Huawei, a Chinese telecommunications company, and some of the concerns that they would provide intelligence inside in terms of some of their products. Mm -hmm. So what I think you're starting to see now is already a tit for tat. So uh, the Russian government, for example, is, is uh, requiring U.S. companies to turn over their source code if they want to do business in Russia. Um, the Chinese are also following uh, uh, similar protocols. So I, I do think you're starting to see a bit of a balkanization in terms of what, where U.S. companies can sell some of their products. But I also think it's important to recognize that there are security implications that go far beyond individual sales here, that it's probably, uh, uh, we're seeing the first chapters in this, but it's going to be a book that's uh, ongoing for quite some time. Hmm, cyber warfare, that space is only going to continue. It's the, it's the first look-see. Um, imagine, think of it as intelligence preparation of the battlefield. Mm -hmm. They're basically getting the landscape, and then they can use other means. And, and as we're seeing, uh, a number of countries, notably Russia, have not been very shy in terms of turning to cyber to achieve their objectives. Hmm. Well, against this backdrop, now the White House has announced President Trump will nominate Kirsten Nielsen huh. to run the Department of Homeland Security. Frank, you've worked with Nielsen. Can you talk about some of her qualifications for this position? Yeah, I, I, quite honestly, I, I, Kirsten is a friend, uh, so uh, as a backdrop, but I think she's a, a wonderful selection, someone who knows the department inside and out, someone who's seen it from a policy perspective, but also from an operational and bureaucratic perspective brings real cyber savviness and expertise to the job mm -hmm. um, and and I think uh, we'll get the job done it'll be really neat to see two strong women in the one and two spots of the Department of Homeland Security Frank before I let you go I just want to read you a quote from uh, Tom Ridge the first uh, Secretary of Homeland Security who said this about Kirsten Nielsen quote Kirsten is not a self-promoter. She is a patriot and takes a mission-focused approach to her work. I think her no-nonsense, business-like manner is what earned the confidence first of General Kelly and now the president. Why is that so critical in this environment? You know, Tom nailed it. There's no room for politics here. She's a wonk at heart first, and I think that's what you really need in that job. If there's any job that demands um, uh, uh, the ability to work, work across aisles and to, to ensure that you can work with red, blue, and, and everything in between. It's the Department of Homeland Security role. And, and I think Tom nailed it. And, and keep in mind that Governor Ridge was a, a never-Trumper. So um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the reality is, is I think that sings volumes for Kirsten. All right. Frank Salufo, always good to see you. Thanks so much, Great Frank. Great to see you, Elaine. Thank you.